So starting off, you need to gather your materials. You can see all my lumber in the back of my minivan, and we're gonna lay it out first. So let's get started. Cleaning the garage floor keeps the wood from getting super dirty when you wanna paint it later. And you're gonna lay everything out in order so that you have it in place and start putting it together. Now first you just want to quickly tack down the very ends just to get the basic shape. On both ends. Now we're going to pick it up and just check to make sure that it's square because you don't want a skewed wall. Flip it over again checking that it's level and square and then laying it back down. Next we're going to just make sure everything's lined up perfectly and put a couple of screws in just to get it in the right spot. Now we're going to flip it over, cut off anything excess, don't forget those safety glasses. That's very important. And now we're just going to cut off this little extra piece. All of the 2x6's were cut at the lumber store to be just the right length. But as you can see, there is a little bit of hang off because they screwed it up at the lumber store. But, and getting the bar in just the right spot using the hammer. Now we're gonna just tack this down with a couple of screws just loosely before drilling our holes. And so you're gonna get your corded drill a little more powerful and your bit that's just the right size and now with everything lined up you're gonna drill all the way down through all the layers. Now we're gonna grab our nuts and bolts and rubber washers and untack those 2x4s, take the bar out and then we're gonna bring the bolts up from the bottom so it's a little easier to put our rubber washers on. Then you put the bar back and rubber washers on the other side. Now we're putting our boards back and everything has the holes in it already so it lines up pretty well. Now we're putting our washers and our nuts onto the bolts that are going all the way through all the layers and then screwing it down with a monkey wrench here or any kind of wrench that you want to use. And you don't want to make it too tight or it will crush the wood but you can make it nice and firm. I'm gonna pick that all up, and double check the level, make sure it's not skewed, that it's nice and square. And then we're gonna lay it back down and start adding our wall pieces. So all these wall pieces, like I said, were pre-trimmed to about five feet. I used two by six by tens cut in half, and we're just gonna tack those down one by one, slide them into place. And I skipped forward a little bit because it's pretty much the same thing over and over until you get down to the last couple of pieces. And then we're gonna leave some space at the bottom for doing crawl unders. That'll give you practice on your barbed wire crawls and things like that. So at the very bottom, we're gonna leave a spacer. So you can see here, I'm just cutting that spacer, marked it with a pencil. You don't really need to measure it so much as just getting it the right length and then sticking that in and screwing it into place. Just getting the wall flipped over to the other side and basically doing the same thing again. Working all the way across nice and easy. I put in pretty much two screws per board just to keep them from sliding around, but they don't have to be real strong because there isn't really any tension on these. And then just trimming off the excess with the circular saw. Like I said, the lumber place did it kind of wrong. So now we're gonna build our trusses. Here we've got the four x four treated on the bottom so it's not going to uh, get rotted out. We tack on the bottoms and create the angles on the top marking that with a pencil first and here's the cross brace we put that underneath and mark it with a pencil cut the angles 
And this doesn't have to be super perfect, but you just put that in place and tack it down with our truss braces. They're a little tricky, but just keep banging away and they'll get in there. Tack everything down on the bottom and trim the edges with the circular saw. Flip the whole thing over and put in your truss braces on the other side. And that's a truss. So we're going to go over now and build the far brace for the far side of the pull-up bar. Because I'm a heavy guy and unlike Hobie Call, I can't just have a bar sticking out the end. I need to have an extra strong standard on the far side to hold up the bar. And just getting that all drilled out so that we can get our bolt and rubber washers put in there again. Now you can see up close I made a little angle brace with the truss braces. Pounded those in, screwing it all together. Looks a little bit like a like an L shape when you're finished with it. But that's pretty much it. All the pieces you can see I painted with flat exterior paint just to fit in with my outdoor area. And then with a little bit of help, you put the trusses up, put a couple of screws in there just to get it straight. You don't have to get it all screwed in really heavy yet. Uh, but once it's up, then you can come back and put in multiple screws per truss just to get everything set up. And very strong. You can see I went back through and uh, drilled a couple of pilot holes with the screwdriver with the cordless drill and the pilot holes keep the screws from splitting the wood and then put in the angle angle iron braces now here we are coming back to do the far side you can kind of see how that comes together now and putting the last bolt in place and the wood that holds the whole far truss together and then tacking it all in place with the last and final screws. So a couple of screws, couple of pilot holes to keep the wood from splitting again and everything is looking good. Putting in those angle irons at the base to keep the base from sliding out and just checking to make sure all of that is square and testing it out. As you can see it's rock solid, does not move an inch when I'm pulling up on it and going over the wall you can see the whole thing is very stable and steady. Going under the wall and that's a obstacle wall. A little bit different than the Hobie wall, but I did leave an extra board out to the side so you can hang uh, a target for spear throw or just use it for extra pull-ups, muscle-ups, and fingertip pull-ups. And again, it's a great wall for going up and over. And that's Inside Obstacle News, Wad Hacker for this week, Building an Obstacle Wall. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun training. And remember, do you feel muddy punk? Well, do you? A lot of tire training that you're going to incorporate into your workouts might be more than just running through tires. You want to first find some tires. I found these out in the woods on my property and